Hey, it's Ocean and welcome back to my channel. Today, I'm going to show you how you can make Sims that you love and play with for longer than a week. You know, it's been a while since I think everyone has made Sims that they really feel connected to. This is not the case for everyone, but it's just something that I've seen in the community. And so I just wanna like help you guys out and kind of show you like my thought process within everything. This Sim was kind of randomized here, so I'm just going to like randomize it again because say you're in creative oh, sim and you're like gosh i don't know honestly i can work with this face though <laughs> i love this so you kind of just want to randomize until you find a sim that you think you can kind of like work with but i think i'm gonna go back to that second sim right here i'm gonna kind of like mess around with the facial features that's like a whole nother video it's just depending on whatever your style is do not get stuck here you can always come back you can always you know redo your trades you can always do all because there's cheats to kind of go back and redo the traits and you can always set up different outfits and go back in the game you can always do that so don't put too much on one sim you also want to think outside the box i mean let's just be real if you're used to making a certain type of sim a certain skin tone a certain hairstyle step outside the box because it's going to ignite something in you if you have that problem where you're making sims that look like they could all be cousins and sisters and brothers you need to experiment with different face structures and face styles something that helps with this is going on pinterest and just simply typing in humans or like people and just looking at um at, at different face structures and and the way that people look so that you can make diverse looking sims and don't forget about your side profile on your sims face because sometimes they're all the way out here and that's okay if you want to look like that but just make sure that you know that you can like edit all sides of their face. I get outfits squared away first uh, with the Sims. Sometimes I'll even like strip them down completely naked and then I'll go ahead and get them dressed. Again, you don't wanna spend too much time here because you can always go back. I'm gonna keep saying that. What you want to do is still kind of like form the basis of your character based off of the feeling, the vibe that they give you. And what you want to do is create a signature style for your Sim. Every Sim should have some sort of style. And by style, that could mean no style like this sim could have absolutely no style and purposely wear these horrible loafers with with her outfits because she just loves those loafers and that's just what it is and you can't tell her any different this isn't applicable for this sim but i've always wanted to make a sim where they kind of walk around barefoot um like in an everyday outfit like maybe that's their quirk by signature style i mean they have a favorite pair of jeans a favorite pair of socks a favorite pair of shoes because what you want to do is kind of make it personalize like you know your sim and what they like so i'm gonna say that my sim really really likes these um nifty knitting jeans the key to this is reusing cast items don't make every single outfit different you know why because that's unrealistic because we repeat jeans we repeat leggings it makes it quite easier to kind of like clothe your sims when you keep that in mind i'm gonna choose some really plain sneakers i feel like she just sneaker it up and you know what i've used this outfit so many times this is like a go-to and so when you catch yourself doing things that you normally do try and switch it up Ooh, i really like this it's given like bookworm but then also just kind of like you know chill as well so this actually might be the one for the win. Choose a signature accessory that your sim has because in your mind, it's gonna feel like they have something that is special or important to them. Who knows, her grandfather could have gave her this watch. This could be her friendship bracelet with her best friend and then you make her best friend have a matching one. And before I fill the rest of the outfits, I do this thing where I kind of determine what kind of hairstyles they're gonna have on each attire because I get really lazy. I take off any accessories or anything that's on you know, the other uh, outfits. Sometimes I will even go ahead and place the makeup that I think will go on each selected outfit only because it's just a waste of time going back and forth, back and forth. And that like bothers me and I play so much that I just don't have time for it all. So I'll just do the whole top half and then make the um, outfits match accordingly. And that's just kind of like what works best for me as far as herring up, getting out of creative sim so that you can just go ahead and enjoy the game. So I went ahead and finished her outfits. And as you can see here, I just feel like this particular Sim who doesn't have a name yet, um, kind of has a mute kind of colored 
type of uh, palette for her wardrobe. So a lot of grays, dark blues, light blues, black, white, just very kind of mute, nothing too, too loud. As you can see also in her outfits, she has her friendship bracelet on or whatever bracelet, a bracelet her mom or something could have gave her anything like that. So that's something special. In the cold weather category, I only put her in like a little light turtleneck. And this is where you can kind of start connecting with your sim because you could say, hey, you know, um, she may not need this humongous jacket because she's not in Willow Creek where it gets pretty cold. She actually lives in Oasis Springs. So really, it doesn't really get super cold there. So she could totally just wear a, you know, light sweater. Um, another thing that I do, because you can always go back and add several outfits, you can add up to five on each category, which I tend to like take up. But I used to do this when I first created Sims, but it takes so much time. And then by that time you lose interest. So what I do is just give this Sim two everyday outfits. Sometimes I'll even be so lazy that I'll just change the shirt and keep the jeans and the shoes the same. As you see, I reuse the jeans here in the cold weather. And I say this because I was someone that used to literally have to make like a separate outfit for each day like with new items but honestly like especially if you're playing vanilla nobody has time for all of that just to wrap it up before we move on to the next thing like these shoes i've used these for my legacy founder oakland asher and my family dynamics challenge he always wore these like converse type of shoes with every outfit even on like the hot days and so it really helps you kind of like form who they are in your mind and really get like a really good feel for them and of course, you can dress your Sims in a certain style like goth or prep or whatever the case may be. But this is just like generally if you're making a Sim and you're just really developing their own personal style without like a certain like stereotype. As far as aspiration, I always do this first before even picking a name. You have to decide what do you want your Sim to do now? Or what do you want them to achieve later? So basically, you decide what's a short-term goal for them or what you consider a long-term goal for them because you are the player. Right now, I could choose that I want my sim to be a painter extraordinaire. Now, this is very easy to accomplish as you can have multiple aspirations in a sim's lifetime once you complete it or at any time. Even if you don't want to complete it, you don't lose the progress. So this is more like a short-term to me. But then if we go to family, something like Big Happy Family, this sim wants to build a large and loving household, could possibly be a long-term goal. So if I don't feel like messing with aspirations for a good minute in my sim's life, I might choose something more long-term like this. Uh, the equivalent to this and something else would be like Renaissance sim, something that's gonna take time and just not to be like so easily rushed. The aspiration doesn't always have to match their career. The aspiration does not always have to match their career. <laughs> it's two totally different things. How you make your money and what you're passionate about or what you also want to do as a goal is totally different. Obviously, my sim probably cliche looks like an author, you know, but you want to step outside the box with it. Um, Honestly, maybe she just wants to be successful in something. Um, Whatever her passion is, obviously, we'll decide in gameplay. And let's just go from there. I don't mind that we can only choose three traits. I just hate the fact that we don't have enough traits or more traits but for what we have i don't mind that we only have three traits to kind of like focus on especially when you use your reward traits so fast forward the trait rule you want to choose two good ones like cheerful and creative don't mind the cast poses showing up i know your game might not do that if you don't have poses and then you want to choose a bad one it doesn't mean you have to choose evil but something that's going to cause conflict jealous you know have your sim be jealous like she's cheerful creative but then she also has a little side to her everyone has a flaw basically what i'm asking you to do is choose a flaw being a loner you know not saying that's a bad thing but that could affect um the sims friendships that could affect how they feel when they have to have a function or go to a family dinner i feel like my sim is creative she is also self-assured. She's really confident, believes in herself, but she is non-committal, which could conflict with her job being at her job for so long. She wants to make all this money, but she can't commit to anything. Moving forward to likes and dislikes, I like my Sims to kind of make these up on their own. I do mess around with activities. The colors and the music, I just let them kind of do that. Unless I have a clear idea, like I might say she does like the color gray and hates pink. Music, I kind of let them discover that as well, unless I know for a fact that this Sim for example oh my gosh she vibes with classical music so well it helps her focus or like she absolutely like detests um kids radio music like she cannot like that baby shark do 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 do, do baby shark do, like she cannot i do mess around with hobbies and skills if it's applicable to the character so because my sim is we're, we're forming her character right now i feel like i am going to say that she actually likes fitness you know she might really like just being able to keep up with her body again this this doesn't have to match your 
your career. It doesn't have to match your aspiration. It doesn't have to match your traits. This is just what your sim does in their free time like everyone else. Maybe she hates dancing because she's awkward and she really can't dance. She's like, ah, no, I just, I just look from the sidelines. You guys have fun. So with the names, I used to go on Google and I would Google like unique names or different names, earthy names, cottage core names, anything that you could think of. I used to do that, but sometimes you don't have time for that. So I roll this about three times and I kind of just go with the flow. There's so many names here. Like, look at this Jocelyn. She totally looks like her name could be Jocelyn too. Look, Jocelyn Booker there. There we go. Um, I always say like roll it like three times or if you're not satisfied, roll it again and again and again and see what you come up with. Um, Cause you don't want to think too much sometimes. Just randomize the name three to four rolls and there you go. Next thing, don't forget about walk styles. Now they haven't added any new ones since launch. And I think, yeah, <laughs> it's been a long time. They should totally add some new walk styles. I think the Sims even forgets this feature. This was like a big thing when the game first came out. I think I'm just gonna do the swagger walk. It's really chill. Never get too comfortable with your Sims to where you stop editing their voice style. Now these three are typically used for my males and then the ones over here I use for the ladies but there have been times where I've used this um like interchangeably just depending on what kind of sim I'm using there we go that's perfect so this is Jocelyn and we kind of already have everything fleshed out what a lot of people tend to do is because it's kind of hard just playing with one single sim especially if you're really trying to connect with them if you have the cats and dog expansion definitely add a pet it really helps to do this experience especially if you're someone that like, you know, you're just not feeling playing alone all the time. So let's go ahead and add this cuteness right here. I'm just gonna randomly choose traits. Same things that apply with the Sims as far as choosing traits is uh, for this, for your uh, animal as well. But something else that you can do is play with the genetics. And one thing I love to do is to have my sim either have like a sibling, maybe they have a sister that lives across town that they can visit, maybe they have a um, like a brother or a parent. So that when your sims are ready to have kids and grow a bigger family or whatever the case may be, you actually, you know, have a family member to kind of be a part of that journey as well as the friends that you're gonna encounter. Add it and then you can always separate the household. This totally is optional, not required. What it does for me is so my sim, I know where my sim came from. I know where where their kind of lineage kind of is or maybe, you know, she, she doesn't have a great relationship with dad or whatever the case may be. Add that in your sim's life, whether you do it now or modify and cast when you go to the manage household screen, um, just do that when you can. I used styled looks this time. I didn't think too much into it because we're not gonna see him too, too much, but we're gonna see him just enough and you can always go back and edit um, if you need to. Terrell just wants his family to succeed in life. So he probably puts a lot of pressure on Jocelyn. He's also self-assured, like daughter, like father, but he's a hothead. So I feel like he's pretty pressuring and because he's a genius and he's so smart and so successful, he um, doesn't really know how to relay his support for his daughter. He may be a little too hard on her in some cases, which is why she's probably so driven in life, but also non-committal. We are moving our Sims. I'm just in a regular degular save. And I'm gonna move them right here for right now. Have it furnished. Now it's gonna take us into this household. I'm going to exit out of the household and remove the dad. Ah, brand new save. Don't we love to hear hear that sound? Um, okay, so you could actually leave dad in here if you want, make it a two bedroom, but we're not gonna do that. And then we're gonna save and go to manage worlds. So go to manage households, transfer the Sims. Most of you probably already know how to do this. And we're gonna move dad out, go up here to the manage worlds. What I like to do is uh, move it into the other households because I don't want to like worry about the Sims. But what I'm going to do is move household into a lot. Free real estate on. We're going to move him anywhere. He could probably be in this really nice house um, over here. So. So what's really cool is that dad now lives across town, really not too far away. And Jocelyn can visit him as ever, like as many times as she wants. She can invite him to things, really big accomplishments in her life. Um, if she decides to have children, he's there. And the relationship is still, you know, there, good and Gucci. And obviously, if you wanted Terrell to have even more substance, you could go into his house, so get him a job, cheat up, like whatever, you know, you want him to be in skills and stuff like that. You can totally do that. I typically turn aging off. I just do. 
I, I don't know why I have a problem with like playing Sims throughout their whole life. This is completely up to you. But in the phases of trying to get to know my Sims, I'm like, I probably will put it on long or normal um, just for the longevity of the gameplay because I tend to just take a while. This is going to vary player by player. But again, I'll have aging off and then I'll age manually or I'll just have it on long because that's just how it works for me. Careers really vary like on a case by case basis. She has this aspiration, but that doesn't quite mean that she has to jump into having all this money, right? What if right now she only has a job as a retail employee, you know, working from 6 p.m. to 10, and then in the morning she's selling, you know, uh, I don't know, handcrafted goods, candles, something else like that, make it kind of purposeful. What if she wants to actually get a career in law, but to do that she has to actually go to school? Um, what you can do is find a job like this, and then also enroll in school and give your sim depth. You have to do it because the sims won't do it. They give you all the options to do so, but it's definitely a dollhouse game. So you're playing Barbies here, essentially. <laughs> so we'll go ahead and do that um, because I want her to have a little bit of a realistic struggle, which is why I'm playing online on long right now. She wants to get a promotion instantly. Um, you know, she's here as a shelf stalker, but she knows she's worth so much more than that. It doesn't take away from the fact that at the end of the day, she wants to be wealthy. Um, but she also has to get into college or dad's going to have a fit. Also, always change your phone cover. I always do this when I first go in a game. Um, I'm keep it nice and clean. I love the phone. Like, I just, I love it. I live for it. I'm not going to design this whole house, but I'm going to give you some little tips on how you can also make this house a home for your sim. You want to add little details, especially in the bedroom, which is like your Sims private space on, you know, um, how they got there, what they like. I want to go for a really calm bedroom. I really love this bed. I feel like it would totally fit her style but because we're not working with too, too much. I mean, we are, but she wants to also still save her money too. We're going to go for a cheaper bed and then we get our next two paychecks. We'll get the modern colonial bed, you know? Do little things like that because it's going to make your Sims feel like they have absolute purpose. Maybe she loves this modern looking bed, but she brought this old nightstand from her dad's house. Um, but So before you go like, oh, I'm going to match this and match that, you know, like just think of it that way. Little ways that you can kind of make things up. A lot of the times I feel like people decorate according to like what they think is really nice. This looks great here, this little plant, right? But what if my sim doesn't care for plants? You know, like what if they're like, you know, I could care less. You know, some people don't really care for plants. But you could add a, you know, photo right here. What if she kind of has some clutter on the side of the bed because she likes to read at night? Maybe she she is, you know obviously trying to be a university student and so maybe she has textbooks near her bed because she studies late at night that's like the only time she has time to and make it a conscious like goal like your sim is like oh man i have the money to change these counters but do i want to spend it on that right now no so you know maybe they may not do that and when you hit 10k that's when you can finally renovate like keep little things like that in mind because that's gonna like drastically help you like with your gameplay because you're now thinking as if you're in the game it's, it's a little weird you know but hey you wanted to be immersed this is how you have to do it i saw a joke like someone was saying that in order to play the sims 4 you need an imagination and it's true like i'm not even gonna lie to you you do need an imagination and what's wrong with that you know like i love this game like i just came to the conclusion the other day too like i love this game I really love The Sims 4 because I look at it just directly like how it is. I mean, it's been years now. I've played every part of the franchise and I think respectfully The Sims 2 is probably like the all time best all rounder. But regardless of the fact, this is a it's a really it's a good game. It, and, and I play this game a lot. <laughs> It definitely requires imagination. If you have imagination, that's great. And if you can take that somewhere, if you're someone that's easily inspired, then you have, you know, even when you have your ruts, you'll get back into it again and you'll find some someone else you want to create and kind of get into. It's just, it's a sandbox game and it's not, it's, you know, definitely different, but it doesn't mean that it's not good. Something that I think would be kind of cool is to maybe add a camera maybe like on the side she's like into photography and then sells her photos for money and then you know maybe that comes that you know something comes for that you know definitely want the decorative box so we can put our decorations up when the holidays come around even after doing all of these steps you literally still may feel the same exact way like i don't 
not feeling this sim, even if you're not, give the sim a chance to play. I always say the first couple days of a Sims game, especially a new a new one, is completely like it's gonna be boring regardless of who you are. I don't care if you eat, sleep, and breathe Sims, you're you're gonna like it's boring the first couple of days because you're establishing everything. What's really cool is that things can pick up, things can change, um, relationships. That's why I said having a best friend or brother or something, you know, I might even say, you know, dad might call, you know, actually I might go ahead, invite dad over and say, hey dad, I think I'm gonna like make some brunch, you know, something like that. I'll serve some fruit salad before he gets here. And yeah, as far as the pictures, like I said, with photography, She's obviously going to like begin her photography skill and maybe she sells pictures for money, you know, boom, we just made 18 simoleons. So that's like a side thing she's doing. So let's go ahead and invite him in. We can also give him the residence keys here uh, just in case we want dad to be able to come in whenever he wants. And maybe we will give him the key. Maybe he's the one that bought us the house and we just kind of like live in it and rent it out. Maybe he hates our cat, you know, <laughs> Like, he's like, okay, so uh, any luck on, on, and you hear anything back from college lately or anything? And she's like, I haven't even sent the application. <laughs> I could honestly play this right now. Isn't that wild? I could play this right now because I feel like so connected. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I really hope that it helps you kind of get connected to Sims, give you like a little base or foundation of where to start with your Sims and just get connected again. I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you did, if you found it helpful, please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Just keep simming. Always, always, always stay wavy and I will see you in the next video. Alrighty, peace out.